There was the mother grizzly coming for us, as hard as ever she could come. Boy, was she traveling. So Hassler and I, we threw our rucksacks off with my camera equipment in it, and we ran as hard as ever we bloody well could. We jumped up into trees, and I climbed up a little way, I looked back, and there was Hassler's legs disappearing up into the tree. And almost at the same time, the grizzly appeared at the bottom of the tree. And she looked so small, you know, she didn't look like she'd ever be able to get him. His legs were way too high. But there I was wrong because I learned something there that I never realized before, that a bear is like a caterpillar. You know how a caterpillar gets, suddenly gets bigger, stands up? Well, the bear does the same thing. And she stood up and she took Hassler by the leg at nine feet. He was nine feet off the ground and she just grabbed him by the leg and she ripped him right out of the tree just like somebody had hit him on the head with an ax. And she jumped on him, started to tear at him just like a wild creature, for that's what she was after all. And poor Hassler was crying for help. And here was I sitting up a tree and I didn't know what to do. Now there's a real predicament. Would you stay up in the tree or would you come down? There was only one thing to do. At least I thought at the time, for some reason or other, I did it. We came down out of the tree. And we came up behind the old grizzly and we whacked him over the behind with a stick. So he swung around and she came at me. And so I started to run. But I remembered that a grizzly can run awfully fast. They can overtake a horse in an open field. So I threw myself on the ground so that the bear wouldn't have a chance to strike at me with his claws. And then when he rushed at me, I kicked him in the face. Well, she got very mad, and she was just as quick as lightning. She grabbed me by the leg with her mouth. So I beat at her with my fists to try and make her let go. So she did. She let go. And she grabbed me by the arm. And then just as quickly as she attacked me, she went back after Hassler. Now Hassler had been mauled very badly. And anybody who pl tells you that if you play dead, the grizzly won't bother you, they're crazy as hell, and you can tell them from me. Because the grizzly went right back and started to maul Hassler again. And having mauled Hassler again, she came back looking for me. So she grabs me in the upper part of the right arm above the elbow. She grabs me and she just shakes me like a rat. She threw me probably 10 or 15 feet. Now, while that was happening, Christian Hassler regained consciousness, and he realized that there was nothing that he could do. He was very badly wounded, and he made a run for it, and he got away. And he alternately ran and walked and fell unconscious at least eight times, all the way back to Wapta Lake from above Sherbrooke Lake. The grizzly makes a rush for me again. And she runs across, and she comes right at my face. So I roll over, turn my face down into the rocks, and she bit me all over my body. And she passed all the way over me. She stepped on me once, and it was just like somebody putting a grand piano on you. Terrible weight. I looked up, and there was the cub. It had come down off the mountainside. Just as she comes at me the fourth time, the cub lets out a little yelping noise. She turns around and she goes off down the trail with the cub. The cub saved my life. <laughs>